Okay, so once upon a time, somebody told you it is super important to learn how to long divide because one day you will need that skill. And you thought, really? I don't know if I'll ever need that skill. Well, the day has finally arrived. In order to convert a fraction to a decimal, if you do not have a calculator, you will need to know how to long divide. So we're going to go through that right now. Before we do, though, quick reminder that when you see this fraction bar here, it does mean divided by. So 3 over 8 is the same thing as 3 divided by 8. And that's what you have to keep in mind whenever you're converting fractions to decimals. All right, so now we have 3 divided by 8 because we've just established that that's what the fraction bar means. Now, when you're dividing, when you're setting up a long division, remember that the number that's first goes inside and the number that's second goes out there before the division. All right, I'm going to erase those arrows to give us space and we're going to begin. So we have the 8 there and the 3 there. All right, so now the first thing that we have to ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 3? Well, 8 is a bigger number than 3. It does not go into 3, so we put 0 here. All right, in order to give us a, ourselves a chance to succeed, we need more digits, and we have to add more digits to that 3. But we can't just go on and add digits all willy-nilly, that makes no sense. So I'm going to put point zero. So now we're dividing into three still, but now we're dividing into three point zero. So we can now put a decimal point here. So we're lining up our decimal points, and we're going to ask how many times does eight go into 30? All right. So 8 goes into 30 three times with a remainder, of course, and we're going to see what that remainder is. So 8 into 30 is 3, but 8 times 3 is 24. We're going to write that 24 there, and we're going to subtract. So even though we are looking at 3.0, we're going to treat it like 30. Hopefully you remember your long division and what I'm doing right now is not alien to you. So we're going to treat this like 30 and we're going to subtract 24 to, from it to see what the remainder that goes here is. And we get that the remainder there is 6. And now we're going to keep that number going and we're going to carry that down there. And now we can ask ourselves, how many times does 8 go into 60? And that is going to be our next number that goes in this spot. How many times does 8 go into 60? 8 goes into 67 times with a remainder. So we're going to have to figure out what that remainder is. So in order to figure out what that remainder is, we multiply 8 by 7. And we get 56. And we subtract... And the remainder there is 4. Alright, so we can keep going with this until it ends up stopping at some point. Or some this one will stop. Some will never stop. But this one will stop. So we'll go with this till the end. Alright, so I'm going to add another 0 here. And we can bring it down here. And we get 40. And then the question is, how many times does 8 go into 40? And 8 goes into 40 five times. And so we then, in order to figure out the remainder, there is no remainder. But in order to figure out the remainder, if there was one, we would have to multiply 8 by 5, and we would get 40. And to figure out the remainder, we would subtract, but we get no remainder. And so our answer, when we divide 3 divided by 8, is at the top. It is 0 0.375, and we have successfully converted 3 eighths to a decimal. All right, if you feel like you need to know or see one more for practice, come with me. We're going to do one more. Okay, so this one will happen a little bit faster now that you've seen it once. 
5 over 11 is the same as 5 divided by 11. So we can go ahead and set that up. 5 divided by 11 and or division looks like this. The 11 goes out here, the 5 goes in here. Now 5 does not go into, sorry, 11 does not go into 5. So we can go ahead and put 0 there. Um, but 11 does go into 50. 11 goes into 50 four times. Now we just have to make sure that we line up that decimal point in the answer. So 11 goes into 54 times, but 11 times 50 is 44. And we have to subtract in order to get that first remainder, or remainder is 6. And then we can keep going. We add a 0 and bring it down. And then we have to ask ourselves how many times does 11 go into 60? And 11 goes into 60 five times. So we have 5. We multiply 5 by 11 and get 55. So the remainder in this case is 5. Now we can go ahead and keep it going and pull that 0 down. 11 goes into 50 as we just discussed four times, 